Welcome students to the series of lectures for the course Corporate Law. Now in this regard today we are going to discuss a very important topic which is called as books of accounts and financial statements. Books of accounts to be kept by the company, this is legally binding under section 230 of the Companies Act 2030. First of all, we shall discuss the two methods. One is called accrual basis accounting and the second one is called as cash basis accounting. This is very important for you to understand. Now, first of all, let us discuss what is accrual accounting. Under this method, revenue is accounted for when it is earned. Unlike the cash method, the accrual method records revenue when a product or service is delivered to a customer with the expectation that money will be paid in the future. In other words, money is accounted for before it is received. Likewise, expenses for goods and services are recorded before any cash is paid out for them. Now, another method which is called as cash basis accounting. Under this method, revenue is reported on the income statement only when cash is received. Expenses are recorded only when cash is paid out. The cash method is typically used by small businesses and for personal finances. Now let us discuss about various books of accounts. A company should keep proper books of accounts in respect of cash received and expended by the company. Number B, sales and purchases of goods by the company and all assets and liabilities of the company. And in case of company engaged in production, processing, manufacturing or mining activities, a production record has to be also maintained. Books of account should be preserved for 10 years. Books of accounts ought to be kept at the registered office of the company. If kept at any other place, the registrar of the company should be informed. Books of accounts should give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company and should contain explanation of transactions. Directors can inspect the books of account during the business hours. If the company fails to comply with the above provisions, a director, including chief executive and chief accountant of the listed company, is liable to imprisonment and also will be fined. Now, what is an accounting cycle? First of all, let us discuss accounting cycle. Accounting cycle starts with a transaction. Transaction has to be there with the support of a document, a voucher, books of original entry, journal, day book, books of secondary entry, that is the ledger, and finally, the financial statements. Now, transaction source documents. Now, what are the various you know, documents which become a source for recording the, in the books of accounts? Number one is sale invoice, purchase invoice, sales return, credit note, Purchases return, credit note, cash received, cash memo is a support as a voucher, cash paid receipt is another voucher, cash memo lease is another voucher, or higher purchase agreement is another you know, voucher. Then the vouchers are like this, receipt voucher, payment voucher, journal voucher, petty cash voucher. Now let us discuss about what are books of original entry. Purchase journal, sales journal, purchase returns journal, sales returns journal, cash book, two, three column cash book because we have two variants in the bigger you know, cash book which is called as two and three columns. Then we again have one more cash book which is called as petty cash book. Now books of secondary entry. Now books of secondary entry contains our main ledger and subsidiary ledger. Now then we have financial statements. These statements are balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, 
schedules to various classes of assets, liabilities, like current assets, current liabilities, fixed assets, fixed liabilities. These are the schedules which are not available to the public, but they are there, you know, annexed with the financial statements. Now, recording of transactions from the source documents. The few examples of source of documents which are required to support different types of transactions. Transaction source documents. Sales invoice. This is a source document. Purchase invoice. Sales return, credit note. Purchase return, credit note. Cash receipt. Memo, receipt, cash paid. Cash memo receipt. Lease, hire, purchase, agreements, staff salaries, approved payrolls, electricity, gas, water, telephone, metered bills, invoices. These are all document sources. Now, recording in the books. To record credit transaction, books of account, books of original entry, that is journal, cash book for cash receipts and payments, Main ledger, subsidiary ledger, other ledgers, debtor ledger, creditor's ledger, materials ledger. After the ledger accounts have been prepared, trial balance has to be prepared to check errors of omission and errors of commission. And to rectify those errors after the trial balance has been prepared. The next step would be to preparing financial statements. Number one, books of original entry. Number second, books of secondary entries. These are further subdivided according to the needs of the business and complexities of the transaction. Just after analyzing a transaction or event for its debit and credit effects, it is required to record them in a systematic way. So that the books of accounts in which debit and credit are initially recorded in a systematic way are known as books of original entry, which we call as, uh, as BOE, books of original entry. In accounting system of business concern, books of original entries possess a very important position. Now, it is very important for you to understand or recapitulate about the three basic principles of bookkeeping. Number one is debit the receiver, credit the giver, which is a personal account. Number second is debit what comes in, credit what goes out, which is a nominal account. Number third is debit all losses and expenses, credit all gains and incomes, which is a nominal account. I hope you have recapitulated about it because these are things which are being taught at the elementary level in commerce. Now, let us come to journal. It depends upon the complexity of transactions and size of the business that what books of original entries are required to record the transactions. For a little business, having very few cash and credit transactions, a general purpose journal is sufficient to record each type of transaction. Journal is the very first book of account in which all of the business transactions and events are recorded. In this book, transactions and events are recorded in a chronological order. That is date-wise. Both of the accounting effects, debit and credit, are recorded in it in a systematic way. Information recorded in the journal for a transaction or an event is known as journal entry. Now, let us just discuss the sketch of a journal entry. Example of a transaction. Say, purchased goods from Zulfi, rupees 10,000. Now, this is a transaction. Now, the journal entry for this particular transaction could be goods account debited and Zulfi's account credited. That another transaction can be sold goods for cash, 20,000. Now, after this, we will discuss the ledger accounts. Now, two ledger accounts will be prepared for this particular journal entry. One, one will be goods account and another will be Zulfi account. Now, goods account, you know, is a real account and Zulfi account is a personal account. 
words written within the parenthesis in the particular column are known as narration of a transaction or event. It is an integral part of the journal entry. So once we have done with the journal, no, after the journal entry has been done, we keep a narration which gives a brief explanation what has happened in this particular transaction. Subdivision of a journal. The journal is subdivided based on complexity of transactions or size of the business. This happens when there are a number of cash transactions in a day and also there are so many transactions for credit purchases and credit sales. This large number of transactions creates a mess in bookkeeping office. Therefore, separate bookkeeping clerks are given responsibilities for separate types of transactions along with separate journals. For example, for cash transactions, there is a separate cash office in which only cash transactions are analyzed and recorded in a book which is named as cash book. For purchases, there is a purchases journal in which only and only credit transactions for purchase are recorded. In the same way, sales journal for credit transactions of sales is maintained. And if there are a large number of returns, returns means goods returns, then a separate journal for sales returns and purchase returns are also maintained. In case of purchase returns, a separate you know, book will be maintained. After having separate journals for credit sales, credit purchases, sales and purchase returns, and cash transactions, all the remaining transactions and events like sale and purchase of assets on credit, loss by fire, etc., shall be recorded in journal journal. Sales journal. Need for sales journal. In case of a small business, there is very little number of transactions of credit sales. As we can have an example of a barber shop, a tailor, a retailer, etc. They mostly sell their services or goods on cash terms. But as business expands, the sales of it also grow in terms of cash as well as in terms of credit. The cash sales are now recorded in cash book as a receipt and credit sales are recorded in a separate journal named as sales journal. Sales day book, we call it as well. In sales journal, no other transactions are recorded except the transactions for sales on credit terms. Now, what could be the supporting document for this? The source document supporting credit sales is sales invoice. It is made up in duplicate or triplicate, depending upon the accounting system developed for recording of credit sale. One of these copies is sent to the debtor, that is the credit customer, along with the goods and services. Now, there is another very important thing to be discussed, it is trade discount. When a customer asks a vendor, for supply of some goods, such order is evidenced through a purchase order form. Purchase order form discloses the quantity and quality of goods ordered along with its rates and discounts. Each purchase order has its unique number, which is put on the sales invoice for reference. Now, trade discount, amount of Trade discount is not required to be recorded in the books of accounts. Actually, it is the discount which is agreed before entering into the transaction of sales or purchase. Therefore, it is just formally shown on the face of the invoice. Otherwise, it has no other financial effects. Settlement terms. It is also known as prompt payment terms. These terms are, in fact, offer to lure the customer for having more discounts by making payment for the invoice earlier. In this term, for example, the first part contemplates that if a customer pays cash within 10 days of the invoice, he will be offered a discount of 2%. The second part of it 
contemplates that after 10 days there will be no discount at all. But the customer has to pay the amount of the invoice net of trade discount within the 30 days of the date of invoice. This is just an example. Entering the transaction of credit sale in sales journal. In case of credit sales, the business is very much interested in the name and address, addresses of the credit customer, that is the debtor. Therefore, sales journal is so designed to cover information like date of invoice, name of the debtor, invoice number, which also helps to trace the other details of the invoice, post reference, means when it has been posted, page number of the subsidiary ledger will also be discussed, amount of invoice, net of trade discount. You should have notes in the sales journal. There is only one column for amount. It might have created a little bit of confusion in your mind that why they are not having two columns for amount. One for the debit and other for the credit, like in journal. Remember here in sales journal, all of the transactions are the same nature, that is credit. Because you are recording in sales book only the credit sales. So you need not to record on the both sides. And the purpose of sales journal is just to avoid overworking for recording the debits and credits of each transaction again and again. So the role of sales journal is an, in an accounting system is to precise all of the credit transactions of sales for a month or so and give effect of debit to debtors and credit to sales with total amount of such period. We will discuss about purchase journal. Need for a purchase journal. After knowing the need of sales journal, it will be now very easy to understand that for a large business having frequent transactions of credit purchase, it is necessary to maintain a separate book for recording the transaction of purchases on credit terms. This book is named as Purchase Day Book. Obviously, like a sales journal, no cash transactions related to purchases shall be recorded in this book. Now, the supporting document. The supporting document for transactions of credit purchases is Purchase Invoice. Purchase Invoice is, in fact, the copy of the sales invoice in the hands of the customer. It is issued to the purchaser by the seller, vendor, or the supplier. So from the standpoint of purchasing business, the business, after having received the invoice, will put an internal number on it and will file it as evidence of the transaction. And also for the purpose to remember that amount of this invoice is still outstanding for payment. Now, another thing which is very important to discuss is entering the transaction of credit purchase in purchase journal. The basic content of a purchase journal are exactly the same as discussed in the case of a sales journal, with the exception of one thing, that now in the second column there is the name of creditors instead of debtors. Obviously, we remember the person from whom goods are purchased on credit and is a creditor of the business. Purchase journal. What is a purchase journal? A purchase journal is a list of all credit purchases in a situated time period. All of the credit purchases recorded in a purchase journal during a period is totaled and then for such total amount debit effect is given to the purchase account and credit effect is given to the creditor's account. You might have noticed here that the rules of debit and credit remain same all the time. Now, sales returns journal, that will include return inverse journal, need for sales returns journal. As the business expands, the number of complaints and returns also go on increasing. Such return inverse can be recorded in the sales journal as a negative entry. If these are very little in number. But because of 
it is reverse nature it is re recommended to maintain a separate journal to record sales returns here one very important concept should be remembered that in sales return journal only the return is against credit sales that is from the debtors or recorded normally it does not happen that return of goods sold against cash or accepted by the business because certainly again is such return the business would have to refund the money already received now the supporting document here is when a business receives back its sold goods it issues a credit note to the debtor returning the goods because the debtor is giving you the goods you have to give him some note and that note is known as credit note which evidences that we have received the return goods and accept that money for such sales will not be received in future a credit note issued is an evidence of the reduction in sales income and also in the amount of debtors it is also said that a credit note is a reversal document of an invoice which cancels the effect of it like an invoice a credit note is also given a number and also possesses a reference of sales invoice against which such returns were made rest of the contents of the credit note are commonly understood such as name and address of the business that is the seller name and address of the you know customer date other particulars quantity rate amount these are the things which have to be mentioned now there is another book which is maintained that is called as purchase return just as we had sales returns now we have purchase returns means that whatever purchases we are making of raw materials sometimes we return some of the defected or those purchases which are not as per our specifications we return them if we are frequently returning such things so we maintain a separate book and that's called as purchase returns book or returns out outward book or which is popularly known as return outward journal as well need for such a return book purchase returns has the same story as we have just discussed it vis a vis sales returns the only thing to remember is that it is also known as return outward journal day book or day book obviously these transactions for purchase returns could be recorded in the purchase journal as negative entry but same as for sales returns journal it is required to have a separate journal for purchase returns because of it is reverse nature to the purchases the total of purchase return journal will cause a reduction in the purchase expenses and also a reduction in the amount of creditors means we don't have to pay that much now now the supporting document could be all the purchase returns are evidenced by a copy of credit note received from the seller which is treated as a reversal document again is purchase invoice but here we shall also discuss the need of a debit note a debit note is in fact a request put to the seller by the purchaser business for issuance of a credit note a copy of debit note is sent to the seller along with the rejected goods in which all of the particulars of the goods rejected and returned along with the reference of relevant invoice number or entered remember a business cannot record purchases returns considering a debit note as a supporting document because the effects of purchase invoice are not considered cancelled unless acceptance of rejected goods is received from the seller in the shape of a copy of a credit note so we have to get the credit note from the seller now another very important thing we have to discuss is entering transactions in purchase returns journal you will find nothing new in 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 this part except the treatment of total of purchase return journal which is debited to the creditors account and credit to the purchases returns account now cash book cash book is a book of original entries in which all of the cash transactions are recorded first now we can notes that the 
books of original entry, that is journal, is subdivided for two types of transactions. Number one, credit transactions, and number two, cash transactions. As we have already discussed that there's a large number of credit transactions, so the books are mainly maintained for credit transactions. The cash transaction of a concern needs a separate book, named it as cash book. Because if cash transactions are huge in number, so you cannot have a simple account, but rather a cash book to be maintained. A cash book is divided into two sections, one for cash receipts and the other for cash payments. Receipts are on the debit side and payments are on the credit side. Each of the section is formatted for date, particulars, post reference and amount. To record cash transaction, on the left side of the cash book is known as receipt side and right side of the cash book is known as payment side. In a way, we can say that within a cash book, we prepare two cash journals. One, cash receipt journal and second, cash payment journal. Now, the supporting documents for cash receipts. All cash receipts are evidenced by a copy of cash memo, receipts retained by the business. These cash memos, receipts are already serially pre-numbered and for each receipt of cash, the cash office issues an original copy of cash memo, receipt to the person making payment and retain as a carbon copy or a counterfile of it within the office, which are used to record receipts of cash in the cash book. Now for cash payments, what documents are required? All cash payments are evidenced by original copy of cash memo or cash receipt issued by the recipient business. These are attached with a cash voucher as evidenced that cash was paid to the recipient who issued this cash memo or cash receipt. Types of cash books. Number one, which is called a single column cash book. Number second, which is called as double column cash book. And number third, which is called as three column cash book. Now three column cash book is also called as bank column cash book. So the most popular of all the cash books is three column cash book. And number fourth, we also have petty cash book. Now, dear students, after having discussed the transaction, the journal, the ledger, the, the other types of books, now we come finally to the another part of you know, financial statements. Now, financial statements are an important part of an organization, which we usually call as they are public documents. And, and these Financial statements are actually prepared from the books of original entry, which we have discussed. Now, how to you know, basically go with the financial statements? Let us discuss it this way. For example, an organization prepares several financial statements and documents which can be analyzed to comprehend the financial status of a company, which is true. Once you have financial statement right in front of you, then you can talk about the company, whether the company is good or bad. Profit and loss account and balance sheet are the same kinds of documents any organization prepares to understand profit or loss earned by the company in a financial year. So you can only comprehend once you have seen these statements. Let us look at what these two terms mean and how these are different from one another. Meaning thereby we will differentiate between profit and loss account and balance sheet. Now let us first of all come to balance sheet. A balance sheet can be alternatively known as a position statement. Now, why it is called as a position statement? Simply because it is being prepared on a particular day. It's being prepared, it has to be available on a particular day, say 31st of December, 31st of March. It can give the financial status of an organization at any given point of time. It includes a list of all assets, liabilities, equity, now, before deviling further into it, 
it is essential to learn you know some terms very important terms which are an integral part of balance sheet now these terms are like assets now what are assets these are the properties a business owns for the smooth conduct of its affairs there's a broad classification of assets these are number 1 fixed assets current assets liquid assets intangible assets fictitious assets now let us discuss one by one what are fixed assets fixed assets are those assets which have been procured by the company or firm or business not with the purpose of selling them back at a profit but rather using them for producing goods or services example of fixed assets are land building plant and machinery premises etc now what are current assets now current assets are those assets which are likely to be converted into cash in a period of one year the examples of current assets are investments inventories now inventories you can have stocks inventories you can have semi finished finished goods then you have receivables means debtors etc these are the examples of current assets then we have liquid assets a liquid asset is an asset that can be easily converted into cash in a short amount of time liquid assets include things like cash money market instruments and marketable securities means shares which you can sell um, in in a in a jiffy in a very quick time all types of businesses like to keep a good chunk of their net worth in liquid assets because liquid asset means cash or near cash assets now another class of assets is called as fictitious assets fictitious assets have no physical existence or realizable value but the company shows them as a cash expenditure in the books of accounts they are a part of the asset side in the balance sheet and these are expenses or losses which have not got written off during the accounting period of their occurrence examples of fictitious or intangible assets are patents preliminary expenses debit balance of profit and loss account etc now let us come to the liability what is a liability by liability we mean a company has financial debts loans or obligations to be paid to other entities an organization might have several liabilities during this operational period due to several unplanned circumstances or to overcome any financial requirement at that moment therefore loans mortgages accounts payable accrued expenses etc are all part of liability now equities we have to discuss about what is an equities or what are equities equities can be defined as the difference between total assets to total liabilities now in case the liability is more than the value of the assets then there is no equity now if the assets are more than the liability we call that the difference is known as net worth net worth is always the difference if the assets are more liabilities are less the difference is known as net worth therefore assets can be represented as the sum of liabilities and equity a balance sheet is broadly divided into two sections assets and liabilities both the sections contain several subsections under them for instance assets are grouped as investments current assets fixed assets etc these two columns are assessed and the value of the contributors equity is calculated as i was just telling you if the you know assets are more than the liabilities the difference is called as the equity it helps it helps to determine the financial status of an organization at any given point if the value of assets is more than the cost of liabilities then it has enough working capital to carry the day to day operations else not what is profit and loss a profit and loss account prepared for a company includes all the expenses and revenues generated and presented in a detailed sheet all the costs of a company 
bears in an accounting years are mentioned in the expenses section. Likewise, the sheet also includes another column which consists of the revenues generated from various business operations. Finally, the amount of loss or gain is calculated by evaluating the expenses and revenues. If the value of the revenues exceeds the total of the expenses column, then the company is likely to earn profit. Otherwise, it is categorized as loss. It is to note that profit and loss accounts are created for an accounting year. Further, students need to learn also the difference between profit and loss account and balance sheet so that they can understand why and when they are used in a business. Now, it is important to have a distinction between these two financial statements, the profit and loss account, which is also called as the income statement, and the balance sheet. Now, first of all, a balance sheet. A balance sheet determines if or not a company is financially stable or secure to carry various business operations. This is determined by listing the total value of assets, liquidity, and equity. While as a profit and loss account statement does not depict the financial condition of an organization, but it is economic production status. It is an estimation of a company's total expenses and revenues to calculate the accrued profit or loss. While the balance sheet is a sheet mentioning the assets and liabilities, profit and loss evaluation is concerned with an account. Difference between balance sheet and profit and loss account is that a balance sheet can help determine financial status of an organization on a particular date. And the profit and loss account is to determine the profit or loss endured by them in a fiscal period. A balance sheet is prepared on the last day of a financial year, while the profit and loss account is maintained for the whole accounting period. Value of assets, value of liabilities, and equity are mentioned in the balance sheet, while as the profit and loss account of a company consists of expenses and revenues to determine the financial standing. Subsequently, students, if you look, would like to know more and more regarding the books of accounts, you should study various books of accounts or bookkeeping or financial accounting in a detailed manner. Now with this, we come to the conclusion of this discussion on books of accounts. Have a nice time. Thank you very much.